Okay, so with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet now finally being out, there's a lot of people enjoying the game, and this video is not made to rain on everybody's parade, but it's something that we see time and time again with every generation, and this isn't just something that has been a problem in recent gens of Pokemon. This has been something that's existed since pretty much the beginning, but has, in my opinion, been getting worse and worse. I am, of course, talking about the idea that every time we take a step in the right direction, we also take several steps into the wrong direction. This all pretty much started in Pokemon Crystal, where they added a battle tower and various move tutors, which was pretty nice since Pokemon Yellow didn't add a whole lot of extra content to its generation. So we were starting to see that third versions would begin picking up the slack. But then in Ruby and Sapphire, they ended up cutting a lot of those move tutors out only to bring them back in Emerald. Then in Diamond and Pearl, they didn't include a battle frontier like we saw in Emerald only to bring it back in Platinum. Same goes for the move tutors. This is something that keeps getting worse and worse as time goes on with them adding really cool stuff and then just completely getting rid of it for no feasible reason. A great example of this is Gen 6's PSS system, which was changed for the awful Festival Plaza. A big controversy that pretty much started in Pokemon Let's Go, but was kind of swept under the rug since many consider that to be sort of like a side game since only a select Pokemon were available and a lot of default features were stripped, was the experience share, which is now forced to be on. This does not add anything to the games, but instead just limits how they could be played. Nobody is benefiting from the forced experience here because before it was just a toggle allowing for both camps to be happy. I don't want to hear about any of this nonsense about boxing your Pokemon because there's absolutely no justifiable reason why this option was removed and why you should have to go to great lengths just to emulate a feature that was already present and honestly requires very little if not no work at all to just keep in the games. Forced affection became a thing in BDSP, which thankfully was removed as well, but you guys get my point. Anyways, with Scarlet and Violet, we see that the games are now open world, they've updated Pokemon textures, and a lot of them look pretty nice. Pokemon can follow you again, which by the way was another feature taken away, but I digress. My point is that many people feel like the games are taking a step in the right direction, but as Game Freak always does, they tend to create casualties along the way. One such casualty is the switch and set option, which is now removed for no feasible reason. The game was always automatically set to switch anyways, which, if you don't know what Switch is, basically when the enemy is about to send out a new Pokemon, it'll tell you and ask whether or not you want to switch out, and you have the option of turning that off to make the game a little more difficult. The option no longer exists, and while this isn't nearly as bad as removing the XP share because it's just an extra B push, though over hundreds of battles it could be annoying, but it just goes back to the whole, like, why? Why remove features that were already in place and likely have been specifically removed between installments? So why was this conscious decision made? Furthermore, and the game did just recently release, I haven't beaten it yet, but apparently you can't rematch the Elite Four members, which is something you've been able to do since the beginning of the franchise, except apparently there is some sort of replacement for that, but why not let you fight the Elite Four members normally? Now again, the lack of the set function and the Elite Four rematches wasn't a huge deal in my opinion. The latter of the two was replaced with something else anyways, but my real issue comes in the new way that TMs are a obtained and spoiler alert they're no longer permanent now the way they're actually obtained is pretty cool basically what you have to do is find various materials and then you can essentially craft them defeating the different team star layers will increase the amount of available tm so you're also rewarded for story progression the issue now is that you have to grind them which is something that was alleviated in gen 5 when these were made permanent the decision feels like they were just looking to add some sort of grind to the game to make it feel like there was more content than there actually is and thus actually made more people likely to hack because who wants wants to grind TMs over and over again when prior to this they were permanent. Legends Arceus had a pretty good system for this and I don't know why they would have even thought to deviate from that. In fact, you'd think they would have added to it. The crafting system could have been expanded with new modern items. You could have had the ability to craft various Pokeballs, potions, battle items, maybe the first iteration of the TM so you only have to craft it once and then it's permanent, etc. This just feels arbitrary and I don't like how Sword and Shield had the TRs either, which were essentially old school TMs and while People defended it saying that they still had permanent TMs. If you're gonna be a competitive player, you're gonna have to grind out those TRs for certain move sets. Now, all that being said, this is something that they've been doing forever and is something that I've been frustrated with as a Pokemon fan since early generations of the franchise. Just, you kind of look forward for a new generation, but at the same time, you're also cringing at the thought of, what they could possibly cut. I might sound cynical when I say this, but it seems like they're cutting more and more features so that they can sell us them back in DLC packs. And before you say that there's no evidence for this, if you really think about it, is that not what the third version slash sequels basically did? Cutting out move tutors and post-game content every gen in order to justify the existence of a third version, but now instead DLC. I even saw someone on Twitter saying how it was okay if they cut out certain features because they'll likely add them in the DLC and that'll fix everything. And this sort of thinking is why Game Freak and the Pokemon Company continue to do 
do stuff like this and it's so frustrating. Anyways guys, I wanted to rant at you guys for a few minutes because while I'm enjoying Scarlet and Violet so far, it really annoys me that for everything we gain we must also lose. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't enjoying the game, but with every new generation and every new installment I just feel like they just needed to give these games a little more cooking time and make a point to try to make a content filled game rather than something that could just sell fast. But that being said, make sure to let me know your thoughts down below. I know my sentiment is likely to come with it. It's disagreements and dissent and that's what we're all about on this channel. I don't sugarcoat things for you guys. I'm sure it would be a lot more marketable for me to just suck Pokemon off just to generate hype but I have to be honest with you guys when I speak about stuff like this because criticism is a very important part of game development and while I'm sure the Pokemon company or Game Freak isn't watching my video, together as a community we still have to have these discussions. If you do want to stay up to date on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, if you want to learn about more monster taming games outside of Pokemon, definitely subscribe to my channel because I put out new videos every single day. You can check out my Twitter, my Discord, and my Patreon linked below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Dark Persona, and Exodus, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.